Good morning. Good morning. So it's been a while since we've spoken to you, but we're gonna spend our Saturday going on a Schitt's Creek driving tour. Um, yes, love that journey for me. We have done a little bit of research and there's many articles out there about all of the different filming locations. And today we've decided to go east of Toronto. There is a driving tour that will take you west, but it's a little bit too much to do in one day. Since it's going to be a little bit of time between now and our next trip, then this is going to be part of the series showing you more of Toronto and also the surrounding area. This whole idea of doing the Shears Creek tour came around as a result of us doing our most recent run through, which I think is about the fourth or fifth time that we've done that together. Obsessed with this. And then we realized that all of these locations are within about a two hours drive of us and we've never actually gone to see them. So we're gonna make amends today. And so we're going to go around, appreciate the sights, take you along and introduce them along the way. Those of you who may not be familiar with Schitt's Creek are probably wondering what we're on about. So let's give you a quick rundown. Schitt's Creek was a Canadian comedy series written by Eugene and Dan Levy. Some of you may recognize Eugene in particular from the American Pie film series among many other funny things. The show ran between 2015 and 2020. It follows the story of a wealthy family, the Roses, consisting of Father Johnny, Mother Moira, and their children, Alexis and David. The family made their fortune from Rose Video, a fictional competitor to Blockbuster. However, after their business manager embezzles all of their money, they lose their fortune and are forced to relocate to Schitt's Creek, a small town that was purchased by the family as a joke. The series then documents their trials and tribulations, often with hilarious consequences, as they learn to cope with living permanently in a motel and no longer having the wealth to which they had become so accustomed. What? Ew. The reason why we love it so much is because not only does it give us full-on belly laughs, but it's just an all-round feel-good show with some beautiful messages delivered along the way. With that, if you haven't already, then we recommend you get into it. Now back to the tour. As mentioned, a lot of the filming locations are mostly in a snaking line that takes us northeast of Toronto and into provincial Ontario. We're not anticipating that we will be able to get to the motel itself today, so may have to leave it for another time, but let's see what happens. So this is Graydon Hall Manor, which in the show is Elmbridge Manor, which is where David and Patrick wanted their dream wedding to happen. This is an actual wedding venue in North York, Ontario, and it's worth noting that it is private property, so you can kind of sneak in and take a look at the outside, but you may be kicked out kind of like we were. Yeah, we got ushered out pretty quickly. I think the surprising thing about this is not just how nice the building is itself from the outside, but actually the surroundings don't really give any indication that this is kind of where a manor house would be. If you have a look around, it's just mostly apartment buildings and it's pretty built up. So yeah, slightly surprising, but we move on to the next thing. is a really cute and charming part of Markham, Ontario, which is about 45 minutes north of Toronto. I actually know Unionville really well because I lived here for four years as a teenager from about 13 years old to 18, so maybe more like five years. I also was a competitive figure skater and I skated for Unionville Figure Skating Club out of Crosby Memorial Arena for God knows how many years. So actually Unionville has 
a strong significance and a special place in our hearts as well because this is the place where we had our first date. Rachel picked me up from the station, which was a little bit of an interesting thing, but logistics were such that we had to. And we then went to the Unionville Pub and Arms, which is just on Main Street, and we had a wonderful chat. We uh, ended up having drinks and talking until the pub closed down, and then everything else was history, really. At Unionville's Main Street is a really lovely place to go for a stroll. They have a ton of restaurants. One of the most famous ones there, other than where we went on our first date, is called Jake's. They also have several cafes, including Starbucks, but they also have some really charming and unique ones. Unionville is also known for all of their artisan shops, including some at the famous mill. So it's just a lovely place to walk around, whether it be in the winter or the fall. They always seem to have some kind of festival going on. There's beautiful flowers and lights lining the street. So a nice place to go day or night. This is the exterior of Blouse Barn. It's where David gets his first job in the neighboring town of Elmdale. In real life, this is actually a paint your own pottery shop called Crocodoodle, which is a very far cry from a clothing shop full of blouses that David in the show referred to as skanky. We've just stopped at Too Good Pond for a spot of lunch before we head to Goodwood, Ontario, which has several filming locations. Okay, actually, I made a mistake. We're headed to Stouffville first and then Goodwood. So a lot of you will recognize the outside of this building as being Ted's vet clinic in the show where Alexis also got her first job working as a receptionist. In real life, this is the Thicketwood Veterinary Clinic, which is actually based in Whitchurch, Stouffville. And that then makes up a huge row of shops that go down all the way down here, and that makes up the main street of this town. While you're in Stouffville, you might as well take a walk along their main street as well. While it's not quite as cute as the one in Unionville, it's still worthwhile to explore. the small hamlet of Goodwood, Ontario. This is actually a filming location for multiple parts of Schitt's Creek. So what you have behind me is the town hall. This is where the Jazza Gals would rehearse and Moira would do her thing in helping the people of Schitt's Creek on the town council. But this isn't the only location. There is also Twyla's famous Cafe Tropical, where all of the Schitt's Creek residents would go for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Rose Apothecary Shop, where David and Patrick sold their bespoke locally sourced wares. The legendary Bob's Garage, where Johnny also set up an office temporarily. Unfortunately, as the sign says though, it's closed. Conveniently, Cafe Tropical, Rose Apothecary, and Bob's Garage are all located on the same corner at Highway 47 and Front Street in Goodwin. taking a small stop at the Applewood Farm and Winery. This is the location for Herb Ertlinger's Winery where Moira did a couple of promotional ads uh, which took her many, many takes. Herb Ertlinger, Bert Herngeif, Irv Herblinger, Bing Livehanger, Livelink. 
However, their impression of the wine and the product was not the most favourable. However, having started on a sample flight, we can safely say that the rumours from the Rose family are very much unfounded. This is delicious. Applewood Farm and Winery is a small family-owned winery based in Port Perry, Ontario. We actually got to meet the owners and they are some of the most lovely people you'll ever meet. They were really happy to talk about their own product as well as how they came to own this farm and winery. And they had so many good stories about the filming of Schitt's Creek and they were just really happy to share them with you. The other thing that I wanted to note is that this winery specializes in fruit wines. So just be prepared that if you do a wine tasting, it's not gonna be your typical wines that you would find in the store. That all said though, then they do do a wonderful cider. We've just picked up a four pack of that. It's now time to go for the absolute jewel in the crown, which is finally to get to the motel. That's gonna be about an hour and 20 to an hour and a half from here. So if you are trying to plan a day trip, do be mindful of that. But we're looking forward to putting the final piece of the jigsaw together. Originally, we weren't going to visit the motel today because it's west of the city and we had planned to only do the filming locations that were east of the city, but we finished our itinerary a little bit early and we figured, why not? Let's go see the motel. Exactly, let's live a little. drive by too quickly though because you'll miss it. And then this is where the Rose family ended up staying. So Johnny and Moira were right here in room six. And David and Alexis were in room seven. So this is where the reception would have been. So this would be where Stevie, the receptionist at the time, who then became the owner of the place, would have greeted the guests and checked them out. If you have a look inside, the interior is completely different. So realistically, anything that you see on the inside of the reception is clearly on the film set in a different location. And that wraps up our self-guided Schitt's Creek set tour. That was really, really interesting. I think there were a lot of surprises about how some of the buildings are now being used, if they're being used at all, because it seems like about half of them have been a little bit abandoned, which is interesting. So clearly they were kind of used really for the purposes of filming, or maybe they got hit a bit too hard by COVID or whatever. But all the same, really, really interesting. If you're in the Greater Toronto area, you have a bit of time on your hands, and you fancy having a look at the buildings that made the show what it is, then we would thoroughly recommend that you do. I think that this driving tour is something that you can definitely do in one day. You could set off at like 10 or 11 in the morning, and you'll probably be done around six maybe seven o'clock at night especially if you want to sit down and have lunch in unionville or stoville even in goodwood there's a really nice bakery and cafe and at the end of the tour you're really close to orangeville where you could go for dinner so you could really make a whole day of it and the only schitt's creek site that you wouldn't be able to see in that amount of time 
is where Patrick proposes to David at Rattlesnake Point in Hamilton because that would involve a hike and it's just a little bit further away. Another thing that fascinates me is just how film crews work and how, I don't know if it's set designers or location scouts, would have found all of these buildings in various towns around Ontario, closer to Toronto. It's just an incredible skill to have, to be able to find these abandoned places or even working businesses and use them as sets for a TV show. What a fascinating job. This was a great day. And until the next time, take care. And keep smiling.